Good morning, everybody. This is your favorite talking head, Lindy. <laughs> I've been traveling down memory lane this morning, thinking about my little cottage, which I loved, and thinking maybe you might want to know some of the stories, you know, some of the stories of people's lives that were living there. It had a very bad reputation, but I didn't know it. I did find out the history of it. Uh, I accidentally found it one day and a um, small little entrance and then when you go back in you don't even know what's back in. It, the entrance is just nothing. And I, I found it one day accidentally and I drove into it and I went, what is this place? I loved it. Just, I just thought it was the cutest thing. And I started leaving messages in their box because their office was never open. And um, I finally got a hold of, of, the, of the woman who was running it. Her father owned it. Uh, it was his daughter. And she, they had another business, which was much larger. And they had another park right down the street. So she, she rarely was in the office. You had to make appointments to even see anything if they had something open. And I think um, I, I, it took about eight months to get in. And this was while I was living in my van, which is a whole other story, at KFC. So I finally got in. And I got the corner unit. I really loved it. It was pretty private. There was a field on one side of me, the train tracks right behind me, which was an adjustment, the noise, trains all night long, and big trains. They'd shake my whole little cabin, woo, you know, things would fall off the wall, <laughs> yeah, sometimes. Um, and then after a while, you just never even noticed it, but when you first moved in, you did. And there were cabins across from me. And so there was one, two, and then doubles. And then across me was three singles, and then the parking lot. So it was a pretty private area. Uh, I wasn't crowded in. I had a little back uh, deck, but no back door. So you had to go all the way around to get to the deck. I rarely ever used it. So, um, but I had a, I could hand wash things, and I had a little clothesline out there. And across from me was Dawn. And right beside Dawn was Andy. And right beside Andy was Sarah. And right beside me, I, I'm going to say his name was Jim. He was a very young man in his 30s dating someone. Really sweet, sweet guy. And uh, he was dating a, a, a woman his age with about uh, three children. So he was very sweet, very sweet. And then the next one was an older man who his history was, I'm going to call him Tom because I can't remember. He moved in there in 1972 when he was a young man. And he'd been there ever since. He had an original 50s refrigerator, if you can believe it, still working. It was just, it was a, an interesting group. So Dawn was an extra organic and an artist. And his art was, he would paint sticks and put them on canvas or on wood, and then that was his art. It was like um, Andy no, uh, Warhol. Well, he hated Andy Warhol, so never, he never should bring that up. But uh, I didn't know that, I'll tell you that later. So across from me was Dawn. He's passed away. And then there was Andy. And Andy was in his 50s and he was a construction worker. And when he was in his early 30s, he was on a motorcycle, had a motorcycle wreck and broke his back. So he was still working, but not a lot because he had allergies, he had severe problems. Uh, he finally did get disability. And then there was Sarah, she was quite interesting. Very few women in this pack. It was all men. 
It was Sarah and me. That was it. And then there was another woman, and I'm going to call her Anne, moved in behind Sarah in a mobile home. She was in her early 30s, and she was a bartender. Everybody knew her, but she was a real drinker. Sarah was a chef. She had been trained as a chef, and she had her own restaurant. And I mean, she was incredible. She was incredible. And so while I was there, Sarah came down with some kind of disease in her wrist because she was using her wrist and her hands so much. And she was only, I would say, early 40s. She couldn't, she couldn't continue to be a chef, her lifetime dream chef. And she had opened her own restaurant. And she had to close it. But her other love was medicinal marijuana. And um, she had started a very small business, uh, and then and then once it was legal, she only sold medicinal, so they had to have a prescription for it. And she would deliver it. And she had a small little building that she worked out of, and she sold from, and she had a, so she was pretty tiny. When they made it legal, she got much bigger. And then it was no longer just medicinal. But her thing was food and natural uh, foods, natural, you know, cures for diseases and things like that. Um, but she was also almost on disability because her shoulders, her arms, everything was affected by this disease she got. Then the young man beside me, he was just fine. He worked full time. I, it wasn't a teacher. I can't remember what he was. He was only there about six months, and um, he decided to get married, and he moved. And right after him was this young girl. And Andy was into young girls, okay? <laughs> Who was the 52-year-old across the street from her? But this girl had a thing. I gotta tell you guys, I gotta tell. This is such a long video. I can, I can only tell you some of the stories right now. It's unbelievable where I lived because I think in the early 80s a medical student was living there and somehow he came with with body parts and he took the body parts that he was I don't know practicing I don't know what he was doing this is rumor okay rumor it's not fact it's rumor uh, this is what I was told he would dump those body parts in the dumpster and the police got called. It was a big deal. Big deal. So anyway, that's where they got their reputation from. So this girl moves in. I don't know how. I get, I get sidetracked, okay? She moves in. This girl is very dangerous. She's quite beautiful. She's very young. Um, great body. But <laughs> we have the railroad tracks right behind us. And the commuter trains. Now they can see, right, our cabins. They just right there. And the station's right behind us, so they stop the trains right there at the station. And they can all look into our backyards and our, our you know, cottages as they're sitting there. And this is multiple times a day. So I always cut my drapes closed. This girl, this girl, at night, she was actually a homeless person. And I don't know how she got this. She got some sort of job, and but she didn't like being in the cabin. So at night, and she didn't like wearing clothes, so she didn't sleep in any, okay? <laughs> at night, she had a ladder. She would take her blankets and lay up on the roof, nude, and sleep on the roof. Mind you, the commuter trains are coming and stopping, okay? So guess what they get to see? A nude woman on a roof okay I'm just telling okay to me I've been like oh my god this is a dangerous scenario all these creeps are gonna be coming around and you know I said to her, you can't do this I'm sorry honey you got to sleep in that cabin oh no I can't sleep in the cabin now her boyfriend was homeless as well neither one of them had been into drugs 
that I understood. I mean, I, I didn't understand the whole story because Andy was trying to pick up this girl. I'm hearing it from Andy, okay? It's all rumors. So Andy's trying to pick up from this girl. And she was shining him on, you know. You know, she was taking everything he would give her, but but she had a boyfriend. And so this major fight happened because her boyfriend showed up and Andy got mad and oh my goodness, it just, oh. And she moved, disappeared. She went with this homeless guy and they stayed homeless. And supposedly she said she was going to Oregon. I don't know. Andy was furious, but Andy was in line <clears throat> for um, low-income housing because this was not considered low-income housing and he finally got in and after a year now Andy would come over and tell me nightmare stories oh Andy was a nightmare trust me Andy had a temper and Andy was kind of mean and vicious and if he got mad at you oh my goodness oh my goodness oh my god and Don was the same way you know <laughs> and Don Don was 80 and he kept saying to me, I got this 24-year-old girlfriend. I want her to marry me. She had a kid, like, three years old. And I'm like, you do realize, Dawn, you have no money. You have no power. She's not marrying you. <laughs> she needs someone who makes money, Dawn. Oh, so he got really mad at me. I'm, I'm, you know, you cannot be honest, okay? You cannot be honest with people. They just got to face their own reality. So, of course, she didn't marry him, you know. She stopped coming around when he asked her. When, and he came over because she refused me and, and she stopped. She's not going to see me anymore. <laughs> of course. <laughs> you know, what can I say? These are just some of the stories of these people that lived there. You know, it, they were so fascinating to me because it was way out of my realm of reality. <laughs> you know, and each personality. Sarah was the sweetest. And I felt really bad for her when she came down with this disease. And the girl that moved in behind her was only there like a year or two and she passed away, alcoholism. They found her in the uh, trailer, dead. And her mother came around, we helped her clean up the trailer. I met her mother. Um, but, I mean, there were so many stories in this place. And I finally, this gentleman that I told you about moved in there in 1972. He started talking to me just before I left because he knew I was an Uber driver. And he had to, he had no car, had never owned a car, never been married. He'd only worked for one company, which was uh, the newspaper company there. I don't know what he did. That was his only job. He was a very kind man. He was very sweet, but very solo, never spoke to you unless he had to but he decided to start speaking to me because I was an Uber driver and he had medical issues and he had to get to the doctor so he was trying to figure out how to use Uber so I helped him with that then the gentleman right beside him had fourth stage brain cancer and I can't remember his name but he was a cyclist and he was quite good I don't know if he was famous but his job was cycling, and he impeded in uh, being a cyclist. And his wife was a college professor. They were not divorced, but they were separated because he had such mental issues uh, that she put him in here because they could afford to have him. She could not deal with him at home. Now, this is what she's telling me. She said he was way too much, you know, so, um, and he was a heavy duty drinker. Now he passed after I left. I saw him one more time and then he passed. And Don, his son, who had, he had the sweetest son, was a motorcyclist. He moved him to a, a care facility because Don was, he passed. Andy finally got into this place and he hated it because there was people, he, he'd go, there's people who need their drugs, and by they're yelling all hours of the night, and they're beating on your door, and he said, it's, you know, and he was a huge man, he says, it's really dangerous over there. And I said, but it looks so nice. He goes, but it's dangerous, Lindy. Don't go over there. Don't go over there. He passed from a heart attack. 
Uh, and now Sarah moved out and uh, her business took off. So she got a big, bigger place and a little better place to live. I, uh, when I was an Uber driver, I'd pick her up once in a while, but I haven't seen her since. And the guy who was ill, he finally passed a few months ago. So everyone along that road, except for the one who got married and he moved down, all the originals have passed when I moved in there. I was there almost 10 years, I think. I'm trying to think. Yeah, no, uh, eight years, because I moved in there in 2013. And then I left in 2021, so eight years. But um, those are just a few of the stories of some of the people that were in there. There were some perverts in there, peeping toms, you know. And when they'd get caught, they'd get kicked out. <laughs> because the older man, the owner, and he still came around once a week, went in and got, he was in his 90s in a retirement home. And he still drove and he, He'd come and he'd pick up the, the quarters out of the washing machine. That was his spending money. Oh, yeah, right. He had so much money, please trust me. Anyway, so I just thought I'd tell you a little bit about some of the stories of the people I met when I was living in this small little cottage. It was a motel built off of the Lincoln Highway, and I believe it's Highway 29 in 1929. It was a motel, and they switched it over in the 70s from a motel, because it wasn't making any money anymore, into a rental property. And uh, I moved there, and I, I really liked it, but boy, it was a really unusual place to be in. You really had to be different. So I'm just, I'm just telling you some few stories of uh, just some of the lives of the people I've met where I lived, but this was the most interesting place I ever lived as far as my neighbors and all their little history. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Camera.